Hello everyone, my name is Abdur Rahman from Alumiax Engineering and in these sessions we're going to talk about power system engineering vlog, more particularly on topics that are very confusing, very hard to find online, things that people need. We're going to talk about all sorts of different things related to power system engineering design and power system engineering studies that is very valuable. You can't find this stuff easily and in a very, you know, digestible way elsewhere. So join me in these power system side sessions with Illumiax Engineering. Thank you and see you at the next video. Time current characteristics for selective coordination. So in this blog, we're going to be going over the time current characteristics for selective coordination. So let's get started. So this is a blog that Illumiax had written up. And in this blog, we kind of go over the TCC curves required um, and the layout of the TCC curve in order to do something like a selective coordination curve. So let's get started. Uh, a time current characteristic curve uh, plays a significant role in achieving proper protection, coordination among the electrical safety devices. And we can learn more about this, uh, learn more as we cover basics of power system protection, TCCs for the solid state and thermomagnetic trips, and the importance, the procedure, and the rules of selective coordination here. That's what we're going to learn um, in this blog. Electric substations and how do they work. In this video blog, we're going to talk about electric substations and how do they work. Now, this blog is for people who want to get a very high level uh, concept and understanding of electric substations. So without further ado, let's talk about the different components of this blog. In this blog, we're going to talk about uh, the types of substation on the basis of operation, looking at transformer substations, converting substation, power factor substation, switching substations as well. We're going to talk about the basis of construction features, compare indoor substation with outdoor substation, pole mounted versus foundation mounted, as well as comparison, right, in terms of capital costs, a requirement for fault location, uh, space, and all that stuff. We'll also talk about this layout of a substation, and this is a very typical layout that you see here on the screen. And uh, we're going to go into a lot of detail here, so it's going to be my interpretation of uh, this concept, this content, this layout, and we'll go into uh, quite a bit of detail of, of the various components involved. The importance of power quality in the power system. In this topic, we're going to talk about the importance of power quality in the power system. Now, when we talk about power quality, what do we actually mean? Well, we're talking about any nonlinear load or equipment that affects the sinusoidal nature of AC power current and therefore AC voltage and therefore resulting in the flow of harmonic current in the AC power system. So that's what we mean by power quality. And um, we're going to talk about the importance of power quality in the power systems. We're going to talk about the causes of poor power quality, uncertain events from the utility end, generation, transmission, and distribution, as well as from the consumer end, the manufacturer end, and uh, the common power quality issues and parameters, such as on the transient side, uh, the voltage variation side, the unbalanced voltages, the flickers, the distortion waveforms, the thing called total harmonic distortion and what that means as well as power factor and varying frequency. We're going to talk about the effects of poor power quality on the power system and the detrimental things that it causes to equipment and other types of devices, right? Detrimental effects. Uh, we're going to talk about the power quality standards. What are they? Um, who are the organization that produces it? And where do you go for specific power quality standards that most, you know, utilities, consumers, manufacturers, uh, most people kind of follow and kind of, you know, defines the baseline of, of power quality all over the world, right? We're going to talk about power quality improvement techniques, you know, something called power system studies, which is Illumiax. Uh, offers and uh, we really excel on at as well as power conditioning devices right search protectors filters voltage regulators UPSs we're going to talk about power quality monitoring and what that entails uh, and lastly end with does your facility really need a high level power quality study fireside chat with Richard
In this vlog session, Power System Engineering vlog, we're going to be here uh, with Richard Jensen, and uh, we're going to be working and talking to you about a lot of different concepts on power systems engineering, things that design engineers do uh, that they could improve on, the, the things that they do really well on, things that other vendors and equipment suppliers uh, work on, the nuances of power systems and power systems engineering, a lot of the design work, a lot of the power system studies work, a lot of uh, the instrumentation work, you know, all sorts of topics, AC, DC, disconnect switches, fuses, breakers, uh, buses, switch gear, panel board. I mean, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. Hello, everyone. This is Abdul Rahman again from Alumiax Engineering. And in this session, we're going to go over a pretty unique vlog. And in this vlog, we're going to talk about a particular project that I've been working on. And there were some interesting challenges on this project that came up where we needed to make modifications of a protective relaying system. So in this vlog, this is going to be a long vlog, but we're going to go over some of the things or some of the challenges that came up with protective relays and step-by-steps on things that we took in order to come up with a resolution. We're going to get right into it again, uh, problems that cause an outage. So this is a distribution, almost like a GIS system that is like a map of the distribution system. And you can see that, you know, there's a lot of complexity here. It's a zoomed out map, but a few things that we can notice uh, on this is that there's some reclosers on this map here and here. There's a substation here. There's various types of fuses. There are poles. Uh, there are some indication of overhead lines, some indication of underground lines. Uh, for fuses, there are various types of fuses, you know, 40T fuses here. There's uh, 65T fuses, there's 15T fuses. Uh, there's uh, the voltage of this distribution line. There's even the arrangement of the system, you know, whether the B phase is on the far left of this looking north, A phase is in the middle, C phase in the, in the far right, and then the arrangement on this line. So what I'm trying to say here is that the distribution system is quite complex. There's a lot of things that are going on, uh, a lot of tracking and management that utility systems have to do to maintain the distribution system. And then uh, there's also a lot of problems that occur could occur on the distribution system that causes an outage. We talked about critters like squirrels, for example, as well as weather-related events and other things that one might not think about uh, is like uh, power quality or even equipment failure. You know, on the one lines, it might seem really, really simple, but you can see in reality, the distribution lines uh, overhead, you know, for example, 12 kV distribution lines are all intertied with each other. They're connected between feeders. They're connected between, on the same substation, they're connected between feeders on different uh, substations. So there's a lot going on. Electrical transients in power systems. In this video blog, we're going to go over electrical transients in power systems. And particularly, we're going to talk about what are electrical transients. We'll talk about the causes of electrical transients, internal sources, external sources, give examples. We're going to talk about the types of transients, the nature of transients in power systems, as well as the effects of electrical transients on the power system, the different types of failures that might result from it. Some examples of those failures, as well as transient mitigation devices. You know, what are they? You know, how do they generally work and give you a very good broad idea of transient uh, devices. We'll talk about, you know, transient analysis, stability studies using software and uh, the various types of studies involved as well as performing a stability study. The big highlights, right, of the things needed. Uh, and then end with uh, ATP EMTP. This is a software that's uh, openly available and is a tool to use um, to understand how transients behave within electrical power systems. This is uh, Abdurrahman from General Pack by Alumiax. This is a video blog series that is produced by Alumiax. So if you want to learn more, if you want to learn with me on this topic and more topics, join me at alumiax.com learn.